Hello everyone to a new episode of The Rolling Tunes. You can see two people on your screens wearing Iron Maiden t-shirts. One of them is me, your host Rumishra. Other one is Mr. Nitin Malik, the front man of the one and only band Parekrama. Now you must must be wondering that why we are wearing Iron Maiden t-shirts. What significance does it hold? The first one is that today is the day Iron Maiden Iron Maiden's latest studio album Sinjutsu has been released, and uh, their band Parekrama also opened up for Iron Maiden back in two thousand seven. Now I'd like uh, Nitin sir to give a brief introduction about him. Uh, you want me to talk about what do I talk about myself? Uh, well, hi, I am Nitin Malik. I have been uh, one of the, no, one of the founding members of Parikrama. has been there since ninety one. So we this is our thirtieth year of existence of playing concerts all over the world, and uh, we've played with. A, plethora of national and international artists and <clears throat> to name a few international artists like Iron Maiden, Dream Theater, Porcupine Tree, Evanescence, Lamb of God, I mean, they're like over 120, 130 of them. So yeah, and uh, I've been a professional singer for about 30, 35 years. That, that's enough for me now. Thank you, sir. So coming over to our main point of discussion, uh, which I want to talk about is the Indian rock. So um, what would you like to share from your standpoint of history? Because from what I've read up, there's not really much of the information available online and majority of the bands that were formed in the 90s and 2000s, uh, they're not like very active active, so to say right now. So I'd like to know that how it was in the beginning of 90s and 2000s when this new rock scene was emerging and there were a lot of bands, a lot of creative energy flowing through. So I want to know from your end. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, creative energy flowing even now in, in, in every band and every artist and everything. But yeah, when uh, the scene was very different in the 90s, every, every single college, irrespective of what it was, barring a few, but at least 90% of the colleges uh, in the used to have their annual festival, which they still do. And in that there had there was there had to be a rock night. Every single college in the country. So there were like concerts all over the place in and we were also like in college or just out of college around that time, you know, like a couple of years after joining college and so we had uh the like concerts almost every other night and uh, you're you're interacting with audience of your own, own age group and the like so yeah i mean this, the scene was crazy it was it was so much fun and and uh, i think at that, that time the the uh, the number of people not exactly one count number of people but majority of people a lot of percent a big a very big percentage of people were into classic rock and into metal and uh, stuff like that. So it was great fun, yeah. When we started off, our very first show, our very first like proper, proper show, otherwise we'd be playing in friends' basements and garages and like three, four times and stuff like that. But our proper show with other bands and everything, we were supposed to get 500 rupees for the entire band. This was in a place called Father Agnel School, which is in Delhi. And this happened somewhere in September or sometime, 91. And uh, the crowd response was very good. People really loved the concert, especially if they were like five, six miles. They just want, they just really loved our bit the most. And they just kept on, I mean, it was, it was chaos. And they just wanted us to come again. And you know, they were like, the organizers are like, I can't do that. And even we were like, you know, it's not fair because there are other bands as well. You can't tell somebody else to get lost so that we can play another set. It's not going to be like that. But that's what the crowd wanted. And uh, the organizer, I mean, this, I don't think this has ever happened in the history of music in India, at least. And the organizer was so happy with uh, everything that instead of giving our fee, which was 500 bucks for the band, he gave 500 bucks to every member of the band. They were like, wow, this is like big money. In 91, it was like big, big money. So we were really kicked. And then see, it is, it's all, and that time there was no internet, there was no YouTube, there, there, there was no Spotify, there was nothing like that. It was all word of mouth. 
so those 2000 people who were there told other 10,000 people that, you know, we saw this band Parikrama and we were like blown off, blown away. They were really good and this, that, and they told their friends. And then slowly, 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 people started inviting us to their colleges. And that's, it's just, it's a gradual progression of uh, success, if I may call it. And a lot of luck and a lot of hard work as well. So I think we had the right ingredients and the right band members and uh, things just fell into place, buddy. You have, again, two guys in black t-shirts of metal bands. <laughs> One of them is me, Dhruv Mishra, your host. And other we have Mr. Sahil Makhija, who is also known as uh, Headbangers Kitchen. Uh, I would like uh, Mr. Sahil to please offer an introduction. Please, sir, go ahead. Hey, guys, my name is Sahil. I'm also known as Demon Stealer, which is my musical avatar. And I'm the frontman of Demonic Resurrection. And I also write solo music under the moniker of Demon Stealer. And uh, as Dhruv mentioned, I'm also from Headbangers Kitchen, uh, an online cooking show. <laughs> Great. That's me in a nutshell. So, <laughs> so that's pretty uh, complex and interesting for a musician. Huh? Uh, so um, I would like to know how you got into metal music and how did this idea came upon you in the 90s and 2000s? What I'm uh, like sort of expecting is that uh, because there was this boom of uh, rock and metal in India in late 90s and 2000s from what I've seen, read and also spoke to people about. So I'd like to know your, your thoughts on how you, how you got into it and demon, uh, demonic resurrection is I guess 20 years old or so? Yeah, 21 years old now. 21 years old now. So I'd like to know about its story too. Sure. Um, so I got into metal music uh, <laughs> during my schooling days. Uh, I think it was the ninth standard probably couple of my friends gave me some Iron Maiden, Metallica CDs and told me to stop listening to the Spice Girls and Backstreet Boys, which I used to listen to. And uh, yeah, the rest was pretty much history. I just fell in love with the music and, you know, I, I just kept looking for heavier and heavier music. Uh, you know, like everyone else started out with Iron Maiden, Metallica, then moved on to Pantera, Sepultura, Fear Factory, Marilyn Manson. Um, you know, and then I found death metal bands like Cannibal Corpse, Deicide, um, black metal bands like at that point, at least I was listening to Cradle of Filth and Demu Borgir, Old Man's Child. So I've always loved metal music and I've constantly uh, had a desire to listen to more and more extreme uh, forms of metal music. And it's it's just the kind of music that really I, I feel inspires people to actually form a band and to write their own music as a genre it, it does that to you I feel and that that's exactly what happened to me I was like I love this music I love listening to it I love playing it uh, I want to write songs I want to express myself through this music and I just started writing my own stuff you know uh, me and a couple of friends from school we tried to form like a little band and we wrote some songs and I started doing my own songs as well <laughs> and I wanted to form a band and for two years I looked for musicians uh, I was that guy in college who people said hey, that fellow yeah, yeah I listens to metal and is always looking for drummers and could never find a drummer but finally in the year 2000 I was able to bring together a lineup for Demonic Resurrection and actually bring uh, the band to life uh, obviously over the 21 years a lot has happened and I'm the only original member of the band uh, but the band has always kind of been my, I mean, obviously it, it's been different through the years, but it always started as my musical outlet and, and I've always been the driving force and the sort of primary songwriter in the band as well. So that's kind of how I got started with metal and that's what got me into, you know, forming a band as well. So was it a bit difficult for you to uh, get into like death metal sort of a, a very it's a very hard, hardcore subgenre because a lot of people when they think about metal they they rock music etc they think pretty light stuff but when they come across any right. of this thing they don't consider it as music so generally if I go up to someone and maybe uh, tell them to listen to Slayer or Creator of Filth or Cannibal Corpse or anything they will say yeah sure or everything so so how did you get through that I mean uh, what was the people's response when you started the band. I mean, that's something that we've always had to deal with. I feel it's a lot less today, either maybe because I just don't deal with people in general. Like, <laughs> I don't really, I mean, I, I do get some comments on, on my Headbangers Kitchen uh, video saying, what is this noise in the background, uh, you know? But but uh, that whole thing about it not being music and all, I think 
I don't know. Again, like I said, maybe I'm just not in the circles where people, you know, have these <laughs> discussions. But yeah, I mean, there was always this thing that people don't get metal music, especially the more extreme stuff. They don't, and, and obviously, even for me, like the first time I heard it, I I didn't quite get what was going on <clears throat> because it is so chaotic. It's so loud. It's so different from everything you're used to. But once you start listening and you start to get what's going on, it it just blows your mind you know like how people can play drums like that or guitar like that and sing with that kind of a heavy voice i mean it's today because there's so many extreme versions of everything uh, it's maybe not as uh, intimidating as it once was like you know even if you look at sports for example uh, the there is more extreme sports today there's more extreme even in say something like skateboarding the skateboarding level is way more extreme food food is also you know there are people pushing boundaries in every field and that's that's really what extreme metal is it's it's people pushing the boundaries of what has already been done so i think people there is a whole subculture now that maybe extends beyond just music that understands the extreme uh, ethos you know um, so i think that and also a lot of cultural changes have made maybe i'd say at least in in the the middle class of india sort of understand like you know things like tattoos which were part of the heavy metal culture uh is now very not as like frowned upon or looked down on the same way it was 20 years ago same with long hair and the beard and everything because now even even though the context is different you're still seeing bollywood stars cricketers and mainstream people adopt these aspects of that uh, of that subculture you know otherwise like tattoos long hair this was all punk metal rock that was all part of that culture but now it's it's more mainstream because your cricketers have got tattoo sleeves and you know long hair and like <laughs> all those aesthetics have have also sort of gone to other uh, areas so just my two cents on it Okay. Uh, what would you say about the overall um, metal space which has been since the two thousands in India? Like uh, I know uh, there aren't many bands, but I know that you have had you know connections with them. I also read in an article that you that you served breakfast for them <laughs> at a place in Mumbai. That was really interesting to read. Yeah. So I mean, um, in fact, actually, you, now that you mention it, it, there are actually so many bands that I cannot keep track. uh you know 20 years ago <laughs> there were a handful of bands you know i you would know every single band in the scene today in probably thane alone there must be 30 40 bands that i have never heard of you know that i don't even know exist that people don't know exist there might be bands in small towns that nobody has a clue are even out there because uh the music has become more accessible it's more common to form a band now there are more people interested in this music so definitely it's changed from 20 years ago uh, obviously a lot of things are still a problem for musicians and bands the infrastructure the uh, financial aspect of things and again those are subjects i can deep dive into and talk for like 15 20 hours about because there's so much to unpack there but like the reason i was feeding band members and all 20 years ago is because we knew each other we were all friends and it was literally like okay there are no shows so let's organize our own show you guys want to come and play in bombay you can come stay at my house we'll play the show then next time we'll come to bangalore i'll stay at your house and it was actually very diy it was a very small scene in fact earlier on it was not even like the metal scene was its own thing it was like metal rock punk funk everything was all one scene you know you'd have like independence rock and they'd have all different kinds of bands you know you'd have like a nh7 weekend that does they have different different genres in one festival which was way more common place back in the day and now now there are you know there is a metal scene that's on its own as well you know there's a bangalore open air that has uh, that's been there for 6 7 8 10 years i don't know how long now i think it's been a while and they are consistently only catering to metal there are local smaller shows that are only metal and there are a lot more of them now than there were before obviously this is all pre covid when you could still uh, have a concert so there are a lot of things that have evolved and changed but uh, <coughs> yeah i mean lots more bands today and 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 the scene uh, 
is hopefully going to at some point grow to something a little more substantial may take 20 30 40 50 years even but i i do believe it will happen at some point 